So last night, people noticed, I think it was the Athletic first, noticed that the Mavericks were not playing the national anthem during their home games this year. 13 games, they had not played the national anthem pregame. And apparently that was cool with the league. Cuban, Mark Cuban had consulted with Commissioner Adam Silver and because of the unusual nature of this year, no, no fans at games, they had relaxed some of their requirements from, from a pregame standpoint. Um, and while the NBA rule book required players to stand during the national anthem, Adam Silver, he hadn't really enforced it, as you know, Michael, since right. healing became somewhat popular. Uh, in recent years in terms of protests and social injustice during the anthem. So before we could even bring this story to today's show, because I was going to tell you, Michael, we'll see how long this lasts. The NBA has never <laughs> in the bud. Okay? <laughs> right. So the NBA, because right. my take was going to be, oh, wait, this is, okay, now that people noticed, let's see how long they can continue right. to do this. The NBA released a statement this afternoon uh, saying, this is from Chief Communications Officer Mike Bass, he said, with NBA teams now in the process of welcoming fans back into their arenas, all teams will play the national anthem in keeping with long-standing league policy. Now, uh, Sham Sharanya from The Athletic had already said that Mark Cuban, his decision had nothing to do with not loving the U.S., but because many, many in his organization feel that the anthem doesn't represent them and they want to continue the discussion of how to represent people from all communities when honoring the U.S. at a game. So then Mark Cuban responds to today's development by saying we respect and always have respected the passion people have for the anthem in our country. But we also loudly hear the voices of those who feel the anthem does not represent them. We feel that their voices need to be respected and heard because they have not been. Amen. Going forward, our hope is that people will take the same passion, keep that same energy. That's my words, not his. <laughs> that they have for the same intensity and apply the same amount of energy. There it is. Sorry. Keep apply the same amount of energy to listen to those who feel differently from them. Only then we can move forward and have courageous conversations that move this country forward and find what unites us. They they kept it off by saying, "Listen, learn, unite." Um. And so I, I see you processing it, Michael. It, again, I, I had every intention. My take was going to be same as Colin Kaepernick. He was sitting for the national anthem until the aforementioned Steve Weish asked him why. He explained it. The rest is literally history. Right. When I saw this last night, I was like, this is good. This is the right thing to do. Bravo to the Mavericks. But I'm telling you, I was going to, I was going to say, We'll see how long this lasts now that people are paying attention to it. Sure enough, they're slowly but surely letting fans back in the games and Adam Silver and, and the NBA, you know what they're doing? They're getting out ahead of it because they knew where this was going to go. And, and the NBA, as progressive as we like to think that the NBA is, and, and, and they've earned that reputation to some extent. No, they have This is corporate. And they have To some extent, relatively, relatively speaking, Relatively speaking, when you compare it to the NFL and Major League Baseball, sure, if somebody got to have the progressive crown, it's that league. If you've got to give it to somebody, it's the NBA. They're more, and they're more of a player's league, and that, for that matter, a black player's league. But time and time again, Michael, and I agree with you, and this is that, this is that instance, they prove to us what they're really about, or more specifically, what they're not about, which is that life. Yeah, you know what, look, I, I said over the summer, I don't want to get distracted because I'll come back to this another time. But I said over the summer, let's stop calling the NBA a black league. Let's stop it. Just because you play my favorite song, just because you got some former players on the bench as assistant coaches, how many black coaches you got? Yeah. We keep talking about the NFL. Yeah. They got a Rooney rule. Uh, do, you, do you need yeah. a rule? Do you need an hour back rule? The first uh, uh, owner, the first uh, uh, general manager in professional sports, it's, in all the professional it's sports, the name of black coach? Maybe we should call it a culture. We should call it a yeah. culturally black. Come on, man. It's culturally black. Come on, they got. That's what the NBA is, right? How many owners? How many owners? How many black owners? Um, how about the commissioner's office? Who are your assistants? Who are you relying on for your information? But so I'll get back to the NBA on that level for a second. But I always, I've always wondered this. Even back in the days when I was covering the league, and. Uh, Stood for the anthem. Mark Tatum. Mark, we got Mark Tatum, by the way. I'm sorry. A little bit of a delay. I just heard what you said. Mark Tatum um, is 
But I as what? I'm, I'm not just trying to name the one. As what? Deputy trying, Deputy Commissioner. I'm not just trying to name. The, yeah, I'm not trying to name the one. But I got you. Just want I want to see. Sure I want to see. I want to see the whole staff. Accurate. I got. You. I'd like to see the your, office. Your points give me well a, taken. Let's your give me on a Zoom call, and let's go round the room. <laughs> right. Let, okay. Let's look, at, let's look at your org chart. Let's look at your. All right. Let me chart. see. Got you. Let me yeah, see. I don't, I don't want to get you off track. I don't want to get you off track. I'm not gonna get off track. But back in the days when I was covering the league and standing for the anthem, because that was the thing. That was the thing. Everybody, like, no one, no one really sat for it. Uh, I was covering the NBA when uh, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf, remember that name? Uh, he decided that he wasn't going to be out there uh, for the anthem uh, because it did not represent him. And he got a lot of pushback, and then he was out there. Uh, I think he was with the Nuggets at the time. So when I was covering the league, I always wondered, why do we need this? Why do we need this so much in sports? Because let's say, Mike, you're not a sports fan. There are lots of, uh, there are more non-sports fans in the country than there are sports fans, believe it or not. So if you're not a sports fan, when do you hear the anthem? When do you hear it? You don't. You don't. And, it does, and no. the Olympics? Inauguration. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, you, know, you don't. And, no. uh, and so we those people. We don't play it at work every day. If those people school, who are not seasoned. The legions, that's about it. Right. Those people who are not season ticket holders uh, to NBA teams at different times, so that's 41 home dates, and let's say you go to 25 of them. So those people who don't who don't uh, stand with their hand over their heart and gentlemen, please remove your hats. They sit all the time in Charlotte. Um, but those people who are doing that uh, for the anthem, those tw- those 25 times, if you don't hear it those 25 times a year, are you less American? Are you less patriotic? Do you not think about the values of this country? So the people who go to sporting events and stand there and look around to see who else, is, who, who's not paying attention or who's kneeling or who's Roll doing call. something else. Yeah. So you can kind of shame them. Like, are, are, are those the real patriots and everybody else is just like, they're just taking it for ever, granted that they're ever American since, citizenship. Ever since it started with Colin Kaepernick. It's right? so ridiculous. I've been saying why I've been saying why do people think that patriotism has anything to do with posture? The people doing the kneeling were more patriotic in the truest definition than the people who were condemning and vilifying those who were peacefully protesting uh, in the name of uh, now we know that we know that for sure. Now, don't we after January 6th brutality? We we know that's exactly right. Those were so called patriots And, and and while so from a practical standpoint, Michael, and we saw in the NFL people just deciding not to even come out for the national anthem instead of trying to like decide who was going to sit, who was going to stand, we're going to do it as a team, we're not going to do it as a team, blah, blah, blah. So like, let's just not come out at all. This is an efficient way to avoid the problem by saying we're just not going to play it. We're just not going to forget it. We're just not going to play it at all. But I don't think that's what Mark Cuban was doing here. I actually give Mark Cuban credit. And I've been critical of Mark Cuban quite a bit over the years, but he seems yeah. to have yeah. Uh, taking the opportunity to educate and enlighten himself during this movement. I appreciate what he's saying because like this anthem and this didn't start with Colin Kaepernick. This goes back to Jackie Robinson. (laughs) This anthem does not mean the same thing to you as it does to me as it does to Michael Holly as it it just means something different. Setting aside what the actual words the context and the background of the, the 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 lyrics to the national anthem are. Let's set that aside for a second. Right. All right. I'm talking about strictly feeling pride and patriotism. It is hard for all of us to take pride and feel patriotism and feel loyalty and love for a country that more often than not does not love us back. And if you're telling me to leave it. Tell that to the people who, who, who stormed the Capitol too, okay? I love America so much until I reserve the right to criticize her perpetually, James Baldwin, okay? So, Michael, and the, the, here's another bit of hypocrisy before I pass it back to you. The hypocrisy is stick to sports. I don't like my politics mis- mixing with sports. <laughs> I, want, I, I, I don't like my food touching. Ain't nothing right. more political, nothing more nationalistic right. than playing the national right. anthem before a sporting event. It is inherently political. It is inherently political. So those same people that say stick to sports, 
want to have a, a, a want, want to feel some kind of way about the national anthem being played or in this case not being played before games and the NBA is capitulating proactively in advance to the people who they know are going to get pissed off. Not that it's been drawn that some attention has been drawn to it. But let me ask you something, Michael. What does it say that nobody noticed after 13 games? It wasn't a story. What does it say that nobody unbelievable? Noticed? Unbelievable, right? Uh, and and so this is the NBA. The NBA has been doing. I don't know when the NBA started uh, with the anthem before games, as long as I can remember. So I started covering the league uh, in 1992. Uh, not, yeah, the 92-93 season uh, was my first year covering the NBA. So as long as I can remember, it was there. But what pe what people don't recall is that the NFL never did it. For a long time, the NFL didn't do it. It wasn't a big deal until there was a partnership, a business relationship uh, between the NFL uh, and and the services and the armed services. The military. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so, and I was going to say the army, but it's not. It's more than the army. It was like it's it's a business. It was a business relationship. And so, as part of that relationship, we started to have it. And I think that was in the late '90s. So there were many times where nobody was really paying attention. As a matter of fact, even when the NBA had it, uh, there's a former Celtic. You know him, and I know him uh, too. Know him very well, Cedric Maxwell. But he played. He played in the '70s and '80s. He didn't go out for the anthem. And everybody knew it. He didn't go out. He'd say, hey, I was, you know, I'm using the bathroom or doing something else or I have just, uh, you know, something with my equipment. But he would always be in the locker room for the anthem. Then he would come out and it was no big deal. Now it has become a thing uh, for, for people to notice. But I always, but I, I still come back to the, like the love of country. What is it? What, what, what signifies your love for the United States of America? What is it? Is it it's is personal it patriotism is personal man. What is it right? If, like, if you don't have the if you don't have the anthem. Do you ever do you, do you tell is, is there some is there something that you do? Is it something that triggers you to uh, think about your gratitude? For the country your love for the country your respect for the admiration any kind of reflection. I I, I just have a hard time believing that the only people who do it are sports people. And if sports people don't yeah. do it, everybody else is just unwashed and sinful. You, you putting a flag outside of your house, or you or you standing up for the national anthem, which are, you know at attention, that doesn't make you more of an American or more patriotic. Or that, that doesn't. That's not that's, just because that's your love language. That doesn't mean you love America or what it purports to stand for more than the next person who doesn't. And as, I, I I have as much respect as the next person. I have family members. I have friends who have served and sacrificed in the military. I mean, much respect as the next person for our servicemen and women and their families. I know servicemen and women and their families who are frustrated about how this country treats them. Right. Not just minorities, not just people of right. color, not just black people, veterans. Mm-hmm. Mm. Veterans. Teach. Teach. Your president, your former president, your former president called them losers. And suck. What's in it for them? What's in it for them? Patri but was he was a, patriotic. Was a, was a quote. But he was patriotic. Exactly. But he was patriotic. Woj tweeted this, Michael. He said that once fans were increasingly back in arenas, including in Dallas, there was little chance that Adam Silver would let Ma the Mavs continue without playing the anthem. Woj also said maybe there's a collective conversation in the NBA or sports to be had on the issue, but Silver wasn't letting one team make that uh, decision. I would have loved to have seen how it played out. I would have loved to have seen. Yeah, me too. Uh, 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 the, the tension that would have played out. It reminds me of what Roger Goodell said. Our fans want us to stand, want our players to stand. Right. What fans? Like, who, who, what fans? Who, right. We, who, who are you who, talking who, about? Who, who, who are you talking <laughs> right, about? Right. Which fans? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, I know which fans you're talking about, but you clearly didn't poll me or the people that I. I have no problem with. I wonder. Exercising their right to not stand for the national anthem. You know, hey, instead you know of what? trying to I, avoid it, I gotta give. Let's embrace it. I thought we had grown up. To I got to give Cuban. I got to give Cuban credit on this one. I it, if if that story hadn't been written, how long do we go? How long before Without nobody notices? Noticing? Mike, it the NBA season started in December. Here we are in February. Yeah. There was no announcement. There was no talking announcement. about it. There's no not. He just decided no. We're not doing it. 
and you got one of the highest yeah. profile players in the league and, and Luka Doncic. I mean, you got so many things that you pay attention to for the Dallas Mavericks and nobody. <laughs> I mean, it's really funny if you think about it because we get so worked up about these things because yeah. we've been trained in some cases to get worked up about these things. I'm going to say and this. Actually you really convenient. don't care that much. You don't care that much. No, you no, don't care that much. no, they don't care. It was because oh, I mean, we do know that it was never about the anthem and it was never about the flag. We know wait, I'm sorry for, for the people for the cheap seats for the people in the back. Sorry. I'm assuming that we've already established that fact. It wasn't about the anthem. It wasn't about the posture. It wasn't about the knee. It wasn't about the, 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 none of that. So what about the flag? What about the military? It was about the cause being protested. It was about the fact that this is about black people demanding that we stop getting killed by agents of the state. That pissed people off. Full stop. Had nothing to do with the rest of that stuff. So I'm sorry, but I thought we all knew that, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for reminding. Because everybody may have not come to that realization. You know, sometimes you got to remind people like where this really is and what, the, what time it really is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't got their watch set right. Um, call that, call, call but that I, a I do appreciate. I, but I do appreciate, though, you know, Cuban just saying we're well, we not doing it because. Let's put the statement back up. I mean, and, and we'll give Cuban, um, you know, we, we're up, coming up on break. Gary, if we could put, because I thought the statement, it, it wasn't just your typical statement. It was like, look, we hear loudly the voices of, the, of those who feel the anthem does not represent them. Their voices need to be respected and heard. Our hope is that people will take the same passion that they have for this issue and keep that same energy, apply the same amount of energy to listen to those who feel differently from them. Bravo. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. As far as far as if this is about driving the conversation, mission accomplished. Uh, and I think the NBA, instead of... Uh, Again, they're letting fans back in. You can put, I mean, you put Black Lives Matter on the court last in the bubble, right? Black Lives Matter was on the court. Right. I, 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 I've been lapsing on league pass. Is Black Lives Matter still on the court? I don't think Probably. I've seen it this year. I haven't seen it. But Black Lives still matter, though, right? Just, I'm just wondering. I would hope I mean, so. I, I, may, I may have missed the memo whether or not there was a shelf life on the on the movement for black lives. I, 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 you know, I hope maybe they got some letters. I hope maybe so. they've been reading all these think pieces about ratings and whatnot and politics right. and you know stick to sports. I don't know. I don't know. Um we got much more to damn it's already 420. Oh my gosh. Names out of names damn. out on jerseys either. You don't you don't have uh you don't have uh you know the the names on you know equality or yeah you know educational yeah. reform you don't have that on jerseys anymore. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.